Um, well, thank you so much. And I'm very excited to talk about aging to this audience. We have many young people. Um, and I think that Sally talked about diverse uh, topic about what we're going to be talking about. But one common thing we have in this room, we're going to all get old. There's no exception about that. You know, it takes a little bit longer for many of you. Um, some can be closer. Uh, to get to legally a old people's age, but you know, aging is something no, I mean, we can avoid. And it, it's, um, I get the questions, why you work with older people? I said I work with older people because it's my future, and their life really depends on, you know, our life is dependent on them as well. So this is the picture. Um, it was right. Uh, it was after the disaster. We have done project in uh, the village that was heavily hit by tsunami. Uh, it was almost five years ago. Um, so this was the second year anniversary event uh, at the place where we created with older people. Um, I wanted to show you this one uh, first because you know just a lot of people think that aging like a place for older people it has to be nursing home look sort of, but you know, like for us as a designer, we can create a place a little bit more normal and we can actually create a better place for older people. So um, I'm just gonna go, go through one of the uh, questions that we have. We have, you know, we are aging, you know, our society is aging, so we have two big problems. One is to care for older people, which is like unprecedented number of people. And the secondly, not many people thought about this probably, but when the natural disaster hits or man-made conflict happens, older people normally get left behind. We are not really prepared well for them, so we have to really change that. So I'll give you like very short, boring statistics. I, I promise I won't show you too many things. So this line shows this is a developed part of the world, like the US is included. And these are line, the line of developed, developing part of the world. Um, I wanted to show you these statistics because when we talk to like the people in the like, World Bank or United Nations, they said, but the percentage of the people in developing part of the world is very small. It's less than 5%. So aging is more, you know, uh, issue in the developed part of the world, like us, because it's 30% almost. However, when you look at the um, statistics of the number of people, older people, they are most of them actually living in developing part of the world. So um, this blue line is the number of older people in developed, developing part of the world, and the older orange one is for the people who are like OECD countries. So. To me, it is really striking because, you know, just the number of people are growing. We haven't really done much for the people in the developing part of the world. You know, um, to give you like a brief um, uh, sort of snapshot of what's happening is that by 2050, one out of five people are over 60 years old. It's a global level. And over 60 population will be larger than the people who are younger by 2050. And 80% of people, actually older people, are living in developing part of the world. Um, so to me, it is quite problematic, and I wanted to share it with you because you probably never thought about this older people's situation in the developing part of the world. So what I've been just talking about uh, aging, the reason why I started was that I lost my grandmother in a nursing home, and I was young at that time, thought, thinking I have to change the nursing home environment. And I worked in the aging field. I have done consulting work for nursing home design and hospital design. I've also provided a consultation for the urban planning in Singapore and Tokyo. Um, and I really try just try to change the environment to make it better so that people's life will be better. And this is what actually came up, like five years of working in. Elders living in grass huts in Africa with children uh, uh, at their feet are often happier than the people in the beautiful nursing home under chandeliers. Um, really, I felt that um, from the designer's point of view, you think that if you fix the environment, then people will be happier. But it, this, you know, when I went to Africa, I realized that environment by itself cannot really change. Um, so what the, what's happening is that traditional view of older people and global aging, elders are vulnerable population who needs to be cared for by younger generations. You know, our policymakers are busy working to help them to have a better life, better housing, 
Um, but you know, they're just looking at old aging society as a burden. It is something negative that we have to do something about it. Um, but if probably, do, how many people who are over 65 in this room? Yeah. Do you think that you are vulnerable? Do you think that you need help from younger people? You know, our society changed. You know, I think we have to really look at aging in a different way. You know, older people can be assets. And also, they can be a resources. Um, and I think life experience and wisdom that really benefit younger people, and especially at the time of disaster. So I created 2010, a small not-for-profit organization, just try to empower other people to get back to their community. Because I've noticed there are a lot of resources within the elders who are not happen to have, who are not able to have access to provide back to the community. So our mission is very simple. Ibasho just try to partner with local organizations, sometimes with the community members themselves, to create socially integrated and sustainable communities that values elders. So we don't create a community for other people. We empower other people to get back to the community so they can be an asset. Um, so we create the place where elders find opportunity to contribute their community members for all ages. And, you know, I'm standing in the architecture um, department. The place has a special meaning to it. When you uh, connect people and when you do a, the community development, it's so hard for people to grasp how much they worked on. But if you have a place, actually, where people can meet, the place where they can change and they contribute it for the design and constructions, they actually see the reward by themselves. Then they become proud. So our goal is not to create the place itself, but really challenge the social perception about aging and the role of elders. Um, the reality is, we are facing global aging. If we don't have older people's behavior change, we can't solve the problem. It is not about young people solving for them. We have to actually include them so we can learn from them and you know, they can also take responsibility for their life. Um, I, you know, the place means something and I wanted to show you this um, simple uh, diagram. You know, society actually shape what kind of building we expect. You know, when you go to nursing home, you're passing by nursing home or hospital, you know exactly what the kind of place is. It's the same as museum or like, you know, courthouse. And what architecture do is to react. And, you know, we have an important role here because this, um, the social perception is positive. You can actually add more positive aspect of it. But the nursing home and aging facility so far is very negative. And we are reinforcing it from an architectural point of view. So we have to actually change. And I wanted to try from this side to, you know, to just sort of change the social perceptions. So we have done Ibasho projects. Um, um, we created uh, our organization in 2010, but I was involved in the volunteer work um, to begin with. So we worked in Ivory Coast, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, Japan, and Philippines. Now we're working in Nepal. Um, unfortunately, Ivory Coast and Sri Lanka um, project didn't come through because we had a civil war uh, when we were about to launch. So it didn't come through. Um, but the Japan one was the first one, and unfortunately, um, this happened after the tsunami. So um, I'll give you some example about what we have done. So this is a Japan um, Ibasho Cafe. That's what other people wanted to call. Um, how we do this is that we actually really talk to elders, elders and then design together and we actually construct it with other carpenters because young people don't know how to build traditional Japanese house um, they, they're very familiar with two by four and glue and, you know. But uh, we wanted to refurbish the old farmhouse. So it is, um, we created this place. And um, that place is a community hub, serve, serve as a community hub. And it's open every day, uh, except for Thursday. And, you know, what we do is to try to make this place self-sustainable. It's just basically what we do is to help them to create the community space. After they open, they have to be self-sustainable. And we actually start with that discussion from the very, very beginning so that 
this is the kind of house that they can maintain themselves and they can change themselves. So to, do, to maintain a, um, operations, they do vegetable garden and they start at farmer's market. And they also have noodle shop. They have ramen noodles and udon noodles. And they also do a lot of activities for knowledge exchange for the community. So what we try to do is to come up, you know, just try to meet eight principal back into the community. And what they do is like the principal one is other people are valuable assets to the community. This picture shows that this person is 78, uh, 75. Um, he was retired, he's a retired carpenter, so he's teaching young people how to start to build from scratch. And principle two, we try to create informal gathering place, not like a nursing home, senior center, or adult day center, because that's what local elders did not want to go. And the principle three, community members drive development and uh, implementation. We brought Japanese elders to Philippine disaster area when we started up the Philippines. And these are the Japanese elders helping for Filipino elders to start their own. And this is a picture from the farmer's market. And they do everything. They purchase um, tent and they set up everything. And all generations are involved in the community. We try not to create grandma's cafe for the grandmothers. We want to create grandma's cafe for young, young children. So we have daycare. They also provide all kinds of the traditional um, activities. It's in the uh, in Philippines. They are teaching children how to eat healthier. So they have a um, vegetable plot. And the principle five, all residents participate in a normal life. This person has dementia, but they can cook. So we are just, you know, just we try to look at people with what they can do rather than what they cannot do. So, um, the principle number six is local culture and tradi uh, traditions are respected. A lot of small community, uh, older people don't have a big worry that they are traditions are going to be lost. So we wanted to create that place. Sorry. Um, this is a meal because Filipinos were worried about like a tradition of traditional meal get lost. And principle seven, everything we do, community is environmentally, economically, socially sustainable. Um, older people are much more so, uh, economic, I mean, environmentally sustainable. I mean, their life is different from us. And the last one is the growth of community is organic and embracing perfection gracefully. We, d we intentionally design in the way that it is not perfect. So people are changing. So this didn't exist. This didn't exist. Nothing existed. But they are actually adding what they need. So we are giving a space and the area so that they can change. So why I'm talking about imperfection? Um, because, you know, institution for elders, it is convenient and uh, it's efficient and systematic and hygienic, right? In a hospital, in a nursing home. Think about our home. It is very inconvenient and efficient and troublesome, not always clean. You probably hear about creating a sense of home. If we don't really in, you know, understand how to integrate this, we are creating an institution that you feel rigid. I'm go so, so far, um, we are doing everything for elders to help them out. But, you know, our family structure is going to change over the years. We are not going to have a traditional family. So what we want to do is to add this Ibasho eight principle into community and directly support community so that elders can have a direct communication with people in the community if you don't have family members. And we also like to have more uh, engagement for other people to inform our policy as well. So to give you an example, we, created, we decided to create evacuation map for older people because we don't have a good evacuation map for older people. It's normally for the healthy people. And that actually, um, you know, just sort of the idea advanced by elders that they created a community resource map so what they have done, it's a very small thing, but they move the bus station's location, they add more benches, because those are the things that they need for older people. So I just wanted to give you ideas about, is aging a problem? Aging is not a disease. I, I have to say it. 
unfortunately, because we medicalize elder care so much that it's almost like aging issues are like hospital, Medicaid. But you know, we are just we have to really th start to think about how to socially change our perception to bring a social change. Um, I wanted to um, give you this, uh, it's uh, my quote, um, but aging has become a problem. It is not a disease, but it become a problem if we don't design well and if a social perception will change. So we have to really learn to see how people age. So what can you do? <laughs> Um, I, we, are, we are a very small organization, try to bring social change in a very small scale. Um, luckily, we have some funding from World Bank to help us out. So what we, what we need help is that design for operation architecture plan, and we need a construction help. And we also are thinking about scaling up. Uh, to do that, we are developing toolkits and um, training and education, outreach and management. And also we do integrate research from the very beginning. We are working with Purdue University, University of Tokyo, um, with political scientists and economists and architects and sociologists. And I wanted to take this opportunity to invite these young people who wants to be a part of change uh, so that we can invest our own aging because we are going to all get there. Um, if you are interested in helping us for any way, um, we, I, I'm really welcome your input and also your help.